Hello everybody, this is Dr. Stuart A. Swerdlow. And this is Janet Diane Moria Swerdlow. And the reason I'm saying this slow is because people have seemed to have an issue with my name. Why? Well, they want to call me Diane a lot. Well, some people, I've heard that, yeah. yes. And then they want to call me Jan. Well, people call me Steve. Yeah. And then I want to tell you why Janet is important because when you don't put the ET on, that's pretty important. I need the Jan. You are an ET. ET, right. Mm -hmm. And somebody recently here even called me Susan. What? Yeah. Where'd they get that? I don't know. So Janet Diane Moria Swordlow. Okay, Janet is my first name. Mm -hmm. I understand then, you know, but with you, but like we said, sometimes you get Steve. But I uh, am Janet, and I have. I'm the, starting to maybe actually like that better. Yeah. And I the might e, change the e, it. The ET with me is important. So. But you know, technically, you are Dame Janet Diane Morris. No, I'm Dame right? Reverend Janet Diane Morris. Actually, right? yes. So, but it's uh, just I don't use all my titles. So I mean, in Europe, because I have like two doctorates, I'd, mm -hmm. I would be Doctor Doctor Reverend Stewart. Mm -hmm. So I could do that too. Yeah. Well, I would. And because I was knighted, I actually be Honorable Doctor Doctor Reverend Stewart. Well, you know what? Just because I have a a, a degree from a university in Europe, I would be a doc, doctoressa. So. You do? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm so impressed with you. I didn't even know. Well, I, it's not important. I didn't now, go back to the news. And uh, mm -hmm. just as you may know, people, or not, I just came home last night, so. I told them about your secret space mission. E well, I hope. You were uh, uh, but yes, I told them well, I, I. Well, I have a cover story for that, but okay. whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have a lot of time to look for news. Oh, because you so, were out searching the Kuiper Belt. And, and other places. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to just tell you my news, and then I will, in addition, tell you some things that you should know. So people always ask about my trip, and by the way, I just posted a new blog where I did speak a lot about the trip, so please go to expansions.com and read my blog. And I just came back from Tampa and New York, Long Island, really Long Island, though I landed in New York City. But uh, in Tampa, very, very exciting for me. I went for a medical training, and I did a seminar there. And I actually received my medical license, which I'm very proud to have received. And even more so, I was adopted into the Taino Indians of the Caribbean. So actually, I am legally a native tribal member, and I can get all the benefits thereof. And so don't say anything offensive about my people, because that's when I lose it. Well, you're part Cherokee anyway. So now we're both Indians. Like, mm. wow. Amazing. And so um, I also received a passport from the nation of Borinquen, which is the original language of, uh, the original name of uh, Puerto Rico, is Borinquen. So a lot of things happen, but even more exciting is at the investiture at the church, I was handed a Templar sword. That's scary. Yes, for, for, for me as well. And I actually dubbed, or knighted, my new uh, Templar knight people. Scary. I was so worried about blood running down the church floor and heads roll, literally heads will roll, but everybody kept their head. That's why I said, it's very yeah. scary. Some of them got injuries on their shoulders, but I think they will heal. Um, the next investiture, uh, will be in Havana uh, the first week in December. And I was very honored, well, I was very excited about this. I was actually invited to be a keynote speaker at this convention in Havana by a very well-known uh, brain surgeon, a, glo a Cuban uh, brain surgeon globally known, and uh, it will be a conference of medical people coming from all over the world. So can anybody go or do you have to be invited? You have to be invited, I believe, and it is uh, for medical people, for doc for doctors and, mm -hmm. and things like this. Um, but should, will there be information on our website or no? As soon as I have all the details, I have some details, mm -hmm. but uh, very soon uh, I'll, I'll have that on yeah. the post. But it'll be uh, December 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, and so people can go on our website. You can look on our SMOK mm -hmm. um, link, S-M-O-K-H, mm -hmm. Sacred Medical Order of the Knights of Hope, where we will post this mm -hmm. information. Or if you want to apply for investiture, mm -hmm. that will get you in as well. And we were also both invited to a conference in Madison, Wisconsin. 
which we have to talk about that. Yeah, because that's in November. So, it could be about the birthday party for me. Really. But some sad news. Um, we re I received, while I was in New York, uh, uh, that Duncan uh, Cameron called me and told me that that very morning Preston Nichols had passed away. So may he rest in peace, and I hope he finds happiness wherever he is on his very new adventure. And uh, I really owe him a lot because uh, I learned a lot from him. And as you know, he was the technician or one of the main technicians at Montauk Project. I was just a lonely, a lowly test subject, but uh, he taught me a lot of things. And so I, I'm grateful to, to Preston. Uh, Duncan is doing a bit better. And I still ask please for your prayers for him and for the donations. If you if you please can be kind enough to the GoFundMe, yeah, that's, which is that still on our site? It's on our website, but it's if you just go to um, Duncan's uh, mm -hmm. Facebook page, mm -hmm. then there's a link there to his GoFundMe account. We and run it Facebook every once in a page. while okay. on his Facebook mm -hmm. page, okay. and that is helping him for his treatments, his supplements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he's not able to work at this time. He has to focus all mm -hmm. his energy on healing. Right. So all your donations, I don't care if it's just 5 or $10, it all helps. Whatever you can helps. do, it helps him a lot, and he appreciates very it very very appreciative of, this, of your help. So thank you. Uh, and other news, uh, but it's been on global news, uh, of course, uh, as predicted, uh, Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh has been sworn in, despite all of the antagonism and attacks against him. And Q said he would be weak months ago, and it came true. Um, and I have information about his accusers. This Dr. Ford was programmed by the CIA to testify against him. Her father was associated with the CIA, and she coached polygraph takers to learn to teach them how to fake and cheat the machine. So she has a very twisted background connected to the CIA and the reason why she refused to hand over her therapy notes is because Ms. Justice Kavanaugh was never mentioned in them and her boyfriend of seven years back in the 90s and early 2000s said in all the years he was with her she never once mentioned any of this ever happening so she's a uh, something and I will also state that all those screaming protesters uh, at the at the uh, Hearing. hearings, uh, they were paid for by guess who, Mr. Soros, who is going to be in a lot of trouble real soon, and uh, President Trump uh, has incriminating evidence against Diane Feinstein, who by the way, hired in her office a Chinese spy, Nancy Pelosi whose foundation may have started the fires in California, and, of course, dear Hillary, who stole children from the Haitian villages and so sold them into pedophilia. Lovely people who are about to be visiting Cuba also, but a different part of Cuba, the part called Guantanamo. You know that Haiti just had an earthquake. Haiti had a 5.9 earthquake. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing left to destroy. So, but that's part of the tectonic plate of the Caribbean rising up, and that's going to continue to happen. I'm going to categorically state, despite CNN and BBC and all of the uh, news services saying that Russia is the worst uh, danger to the earth, listen to me, that's BS fake news. Russia is an ally, especially to the United States, and gave President Trump the information to incriminate these people and have them arrested and put away where they belong. And uh, President Putin, and this I'm predicting, I believe this will happen, he will have a, a, a help, he will be helping the United States uh, with a new uh, status, a new agreement with Iran, North Korea, Syria and Venezuela, as these present governments are eliminated. And uh, that's part of the Red October that I told you about the last time I was here. Um, oh, just a quick uh, side note. Uh, I received information when I came home yesterday that apparently uh, there is a probe that was just launched 
into the Kuiper Belt. Why? Mm. And speaking of Russia, did you hear about that interview that was done with Steven Seagal and I think BBC News yes. where he walked of off? No. What did you think about that? I think that these news people need to stick to what they're supposed to talk about. And if you make a promise to somebody, you can talk about bop, bop, bop. And then all of a sudden they sit down and the cameras are and you talk about something completely out of context of where you like mm -hmm. they did to me at yes. History Channel and yeah. I got up and walked out too. Absolutely. So I don't blame him one darn bit. That's right and it's more people trying to frame people. Exactly correct. So. And that's exactly what's going on. These people framing you know I'm sorry 36 years he waited to say something. One woman waited 53 years to say something. Sorry it couldn't have been that bad if you waited that long. Well and not only that but a lot of these men are saying like Stephen that he was Stephen told us that women threw themselves at him. He had to push them away. He right. wasn't interested. He says, why would I have to do that? He says, I didn't need to do that. He said, I had women throw themselves at me. Right. I, I got rid of them. Right, he had to get rid of them. And there are a lot of men in this situation. So it's all very interesting how they're trying to get rid of a certain echelon at the top. And this is what they're doing to destroy people. Just like they tried to do to and us they do that in to us region. all the time. That's right. So don't believe well, I know, I what know you what's read. out there. You have to make up your own mind. And that's why we encourage mm -hmm. you to join mm -hmm. our membership and come to our classes. Get to know us as people, not all the gossip and lying stuff that's out there on the Internet. Because people who are out there telling the truth are always going to be attacked and trolled. And... So we're used to it. We don't like it, but that's what it is. So it's you a sick, like like it says on on the cue thing. These are sick people. Well, they have nothing better to do. Well, they're paid, they're yes. mind controlled, and they're devious. Yes, and so that's why they attack. And they make up stories. Yes, absolutely. So, on with my news. Okay, mm -hmm. next thing I want to tell you, and I have a story about Trump as well. Mm -hmm. And this is, did you hear about this while you were away, perhaps? The, um, he's calling the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada NAFTA deal a historic transaction. Mm -hmm. He actually revamped the North American Good. Free Trade Agreement. And he said he reached a wonderful deal, a wonderful new trade deal with Canada to be added into the new deal already reached with Mexico. The new name will be the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, that or USMCA. Yeah, it's that N -A -F so NAFTA, USMCA. How, how could they think of such a name so original? But what's interesting mm -hmm. to me is we've been talking about for quite some time about the unification of North mm -hmm. America down to the tip of South mm -hmm. America, and to me this ah, is a start. But wait, wait, wait. This actually is not. No? Because NAFTA was about unification of North American Union, mm -hmm. but this is about nationalism for each country and then working together as individual ah, nations. Okay, so you think this is an upgrade? Uh, because yes. then we can be who we are supposed to be Hello. instead of all blend together. That's correct. Ah, interesting. All right, and the next thing that Trump did, or his administration, is to deny visas to same-sex partners of UN officials. Not sorry about that. Now, to me, I actually think this is a positive step, and I'll tell you why. Because heterosexuals have to be married in order to get visas. Right. So in order to equalize it, if you're unmarried, then it seems to me it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we need to have, you know, what's right. good for one is good for all. Right. So there should to be speak. no special cat of, uh, cat categories yes. for, you know, people who like vanilla flavor or people who, you know, like to eat Mexican food. Yeah. You know, it's the same for everybody. Right. So unmarried couples have until December 31st to submit proof of marriage, and if they they don't, mm -hmm. it says their spouse, but it's not really their spouse. If it's they're their not, partner. Their partner will be expected to leave the country in 30 days. So well, you know that's for anybody. Anybody like that. So either that. make a commitment to each other, or mm -hmm. you're out the door, and that makes sense to me because we don't want to destroy the family. However, you perceive the family. Let's unify the family. Same rules for everybody. Yeah. Okay, and then I've also been talking to people about how wild animals are wild animals. Well, this this made headlines about Melania Trump's visit in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It says, see, this title was Secret Service Jumps In After Baby Elephant Charges at Melania. <laughs> baby Elephant. Oh, well, That's she, dangerous. Well, yes. And the mm -hmm. issue is, is I've been telling people to be careful of wild animals. Well, anyway, they showed the video of what happened and she actually reached out and touched the animal. So, the, and then the animal, you know, it startled them and they started at it. That's a natural animal response. So, but I don't think it was going to hurt her. Well, the trainers were right there and stopped it, and it's a baby. But my point is, even a baby elephant can hurt you. Mm -hmm. And my point is, is be careful before you touch an animal, 
or anything like that. And I talked about that last week when you weren't here, mm -hmm. about how many people have been killed or seriously injured by animals in Africa. And how about sharks off the coast of the U.S. and Australia? Well, yes, but that's a little bit different than waving at them and, or poking at them. And this is what's happening. Well, if you know the sharks out there and you go out there purposely make noise and splash, hello, yeah. you're looking for trouble. Well, you're going to be shark bait. So, point is, is don't tempt nature and think before you act. So, I just wanted to bring that into your yes. attention. And then also, this was a very interesting article. Which I'm, I, I'm very excited to hear about. Go ahead. Okay. This, the, art, the title of this one is Muslim Country, Catholic Country, Jewish Country Celebrate the Talmud at the UN. Interesting. It says the event was co-hosted by Italy, Albania, and Israel on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly celebrating a years-long effort to translate the Talmud into Italian for the first time. Mm. That's your people. Yeah. So in other words, a majority Catholic country, a majority Jewish country, and a majority Muslim country got, to, all of them. Yeah, got together in the world's most prominent international forum to celebrate a government effort to translate a Jewish religious text. And the three diplomatic representatives at the event, as well as the project's chief executive, were women, while all the people quoted in the Talmud, almost all of them are men. And so what do you think we did in this September class? We did some very interesting on work. the same topic and continue in January even more intensely. Yes. So if you want to hear what we know... Yeah, they may have stole my ideas then. That's possible. wouldn't surprise they me at all. They must have heard and then they did it. Might would not surprise me. And when speaking of asteroids, which we have been talking a lot about, remember we've said that you know we're, this disclosure, which people are asking, when is it going to happen? Well, it's already been happening for quite a number of years now. That... Uh, a skull-shaped asteroid will zoom past uh, Earth I just heard. after Halloween. Yeah. It's Isn't a, that funny? Yeah. Halloween is a skull-shaped asteroid. Yeah. So to me, it sounds very ritualistic. Yeah, a little bit. It's called a dead comet, surprisingly enough, because it's lost most of its ice and gases. So have I. And so the Halloween asteroid, as it's being called, is set to make another flyby in November. Apparently, it first flew past the Earth Halloween 2015. So what do you think Hence that's the about? Name. Dead skull asteroid. Yeah, and uh, yeah, dead comet. Whatever. Anyway, and then in Canada, your favorite country, hey. Dave, you, Dave, you've heard, I'm sure, of the Ogopogo Lake Monster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, anyway, it's been years since I, people... I've, I've done paranormal stuff on okay, it. Okay, so it's been years since people have seen it. Well, now, in the past three weeks, there have been actually three sightings. I saw that. Did you? Mm -hmm. It said that um, apparently this animal is supposed to live in the enormous and deep lake Okanagan in British Columbia. And the uh, second week in September, a man and his brother and their families were picnicking on one of the beaches when they saw something and the man said you don't expect to see a dinosaur come out of the water I saw this black form come out of the water cylindrical and then roll the brothers likened the animal to a giant snake moving across the water and said it was about 15 meters or 49 feet long mm. and then there were two more encounters um, it doesn't describe that but it goes on to say that Indian legends describe a monster that would rise from the depths when storms battered the lake. And the first documented sighting was in 72. Mm -hmm. And these witnesses all say it's a creature with a long, undulating body, several mm -hmm. humps, and a head resembling a horse. Yeah, but you know, we actually drove very close to that lake yeah. a, a few years mm -hmm. ago. I remember. And then there's a man named Bill Stetchuk, who lives in a nearby city of Kelowna, Runs we, a, we went there, you know. Runs a website dedicated to the legend, I don't think it's a legend, of Ogopogo. And he said in 1978, while he was driving over the floating bridge that goes over Lake Okanagan, he saw three humps and a head moving out of the water. Could have been his wife. And it was in the water, too. And he said, before that, I was not a believer. So he's organized a lot of expeditions trying to find it. And then in 2015, he spotted a large snake-like head popping out of the water. So he grabbed his camera and he took a picture. And these pictures are on the link, which yeah, are very interesting. It's actually quite interesting. Yeah. So anyway, he says that the theory is that eons ago, the lake was actually open to the ocean. Right. So I found that very interesting. How about this theory, that there are subterranean 
tunnels and caverns that still lead into the ocean, mm -hmm. which is how those creatures of such large stature can survive in those lakes. Mm -hmm. So is that a theory or is that fact? It's what I know as a fact. There you go. But I can't prove it without, you know, showing you the holes in, under the... And bottom. going through and swimming through. But and it's the same things. thing with uh, Nessie and Loch Ness, because uh, for having a, a herd of such large creatures and a loch as small as Loch Ness, they, there has to be an underground passage to the open ocean yeah. uh, for them to feed something. And then this was also, uh, this title caught my eye. It was called Maybe the First Cyborg. So they're putting that term out for you again. About a 3,500-year-old bronze hand decorated with a gold cuff has been unearthed in Switzerland of all places. Mm. And they're claiming that it might be the earliest known metal prosthetic. They said oh. at the bottom of the hand is a socket, which means that it was used to fit over something. And the curator of the museum in there in Switzerland says we've never seen anything like it. Uh, what made this such a remarkable find is that there's never been a comparable sculpture dating from the Bronze Age in Central Europe, making it a unique and remarkable object. How do you so like that? Lots of interesting Those news Swiss going people. on. Yeah, so I want to remind everybody, again, you get a membership on our website. We have a great Q&A section there where you can ask Stuart and I questions directly. But don't be obnoxious. Yeah, you can't ever be obnoxious. That's my job. Yeah, that's your job. So, but anyway, join our website. It's less than a dollar a day. If you get a year's membership, I think I figured it out. It's like 53 cents a day. Wow. So that means that we're like really, Ready? we're well paid. Get that? Right. We are well paid, Yeah, I right? get 53 freaking cents a day. Yeah. Hello. There you go. So join our website, and then you get to know us and our work a little bit better. Um, the new sec session of webinars affirming you is coming up in November. The October session has already started, so you can't join this one right now. Mm -hmm. And then people are asking me where to start with their mind control and deprogramming type of work. Well, mm -hmm. on our membership side of our site, we have a lot of videos that you can watch. And we have this set of books, which are great ones to help you with the hyperspace helper basic deprogramming exercises. The True Reality of Sexuality talks about programming and deprogramming, as does 13 Cube. These are case studies of people. And a lot of people, including psychologists, have said this is one of the most fascinating books they've ever read. So these three books can fit into an envelope. Now, I even had people, we've had them write in and say, you know, are these available in the UK? Can you do this? Can you mm -hmm. do that? Well, you know, we send them out to our distributors, and what happens from there, we don't exactly know. But so yeah, you, every country you can get them. Well, we don't know that, dear. I've seen them. People have them in all different countries. That may be because we sent them. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just explaining. We don't know. Like, for example, does Amazon UK carry them? I don't know. They are available on Kindle, which is the most inexpensive way to purchase them and some people mm. do that and then they decide they actually want to have this I like a book in my hand I like a book too but that's what some people do if they're traveling they like to use the Kindle these will fit into an envelope and as I've told you before we know shipping overseas is horrible it's about forty dollars yeah. US that's crazy so don't just get one book you know because a whole bunch. you can get about four pounds and I don't know how many kilograms that is about two yeah, and a half kilograms and a half. Oh, so that's great health and healing this is a great set Hyperspace Plus, Healing Archetypes and Symbols, Decoding Your Life. These can all go in one envelope. In the U.S., shipping to Hanley is about $10. And then we have, of course, um, the White Owl Legends, which I've told you about before. Mm -hmm. Archetypal Story of Creation. Fascinating. And Stuart Says is a great coffee, coffee table book. These mm -hmm. are also great books for gifts, as are these can also fit in there. Our four series of Little Fluffs. Mm -hmm. Great children's gifts for the holidays. They're in color. And again, if English is your second language, it's a great place to start. Mm, even if it's your first. Yeah. And then we have, you've already mentioned a couple of events. So our next big thing after that is always our January class. Mm. We have people signing up already. That's going to be around the corner and here before you know it. And a lot of people from the Tampa uh, training class... Uh, said they were going to come because they, they really like my, my lectures. Yeah, they got to sign up fast because I will tell you that space is going soon. It's, and our September spectacular yeah. was full. We could not have fit one more person not in there. I didn't have any chairs left, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. so you need to do that. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share to our YouTube channel. And you got anything else to tell them? Oh, so many things, but I'm not going to. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.